Hi, and welcome to another edition of MasterVisualStudio.net. My name is Jeff Daniels, and today we're going to take a look at setting up an Azure DevOps local build agent. What that means is that rather than run all your builds up in the cloud on Microsoft Azure uh, DevOps, we're going to be able to pull those down onto our servers and run those. Why would you want to do that? Well, depending on the number of builds you're running each month, these could start to eat into that free time that DevOps is giving you. And you may just want to pull down some of your lengthier ones or some of your quick dev ones rather than go over and exceed your time and start having to pay to have those done in the cloud. So let's take a look at how to get this done. Really a pretty simple, straightforward process. We'll get you up and running really quick. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in Azure DevOps. We're looking at a project called DevOps NuGet, and we're going to add an, a local build agent to build a to perform one of our builds in this project. But we're going to add that at the organization level, not at the project level. So if we go down over to the project settings, we can still get there from here. Uh, we're going to go under pipelines and then agent pools. We will select that, and then you can see it comes with the Azure pipelines, which is the built-in one on. Microsoft servers and the default one, we can add our own locals to that, but we're going to add our own pool and we'll call this uh, MVA, uh, MVS local pool. So we'll save that and this will be a, we can create a number of different agents that we want in here and keep them all and manage them all as one group. But if we go take a look at that pool that we've just created, you can see nothing's run in there yet. And if we take a look over at the agents under this pool that we don't have any in there. So we could click here to add a new agent. We can also click up top. Those will both do the same thing. So we'll go ahead and click add new agent. And that'll give us access to a download file that'll have the install for this agent that we want to run locally. And so we'll go ahead and click on download. Now, when you do that, that'll be based on the type of agent that you wanted, whether it's for Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And that will allow you to download the specific type for your environment and once that finishes, we could go ahead and take that zip file that's downloaded, move it to the environment that we're working with. And at that point, we want to unzip it on the server that's going to be hosting this build agent. Now, before we even install this build agent that we've downloaded, there's one other thing we need to do. We need to define how it's going to authenticate itself to Azure DevOps to be able to connect and do the builds for us. So. If we jump back over to our profile, what we're going to do is create what's called a personal access token. And we're going to do that under security. And you can see under security here, we've got personal access tokens. And there's one by default in all these accounts that, we, that you're going to start off with. We're going to go generate a new one. And when we do, this token is going to be extremely important. You're going to want to put this in a very safe place because you're going to need this uh, in a minute, and I'll explain a little further why. So let's give this token a name um, and give this a meaningful name. It'll show up over here on the left side of the screen under token name in that grid whenever you come back to see it. So we want it to be something that's meaningful when you look at it. Uh, the organization is fine. You can pick when this expires. Now, these tokens are going to expire between 30 days is the default. You can choose 60 or 90 or custom. If you do choose custom, you can put this date out as far as a year. If you run this calendar all the way to the end, you'll see you can pick one year from the date that you create it. Now, that's going to depend based on whatever your security policies are, wherever you're doing this for. I'm going to pick 30 days uh, just for this test token. Uh, now, the second part about this is you're giving access to this token, and the scope that you're giving it is selectable, and you can fine tune it a bit down the bottom, whether it has rights to work items, or code or build release and test management all these different pieces so in this case I'm just gonna go back we're gonna do a quick test I'm gonna say full access for this thing to do the builds or whatever it needs to do and we'll click on create now this is gonna give you a token and read this carefully you need to make a copy of this and save it somewhere safe because you may think well I'm gonna do the install I'm gonna paste it there and then I'm not gonna need it again but you are you're gonna need it again even if you ever want to uninstall this service it'll ask you for what the token was and you need to be able to provide that to get the uninstall to work. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So take that token, put that in a safe place. And now that we have that, let's go over to the web server where we want to install this build agent and get that part set up. 
So now that we have the personal access token, we're back over on the web server where we want to host this build agent. And I've copied over the zip file to the server. Now keep in mind, this is probably different than where you downloaded it. So just move that zip file to the server that's going to be hosting. And I'm just going to go ahead and extract these files to, I'm going to change the directory name we're going to end up with. And the directory name it ends up with is where the service is actually going to be installed and run from. So make that kind of a meaningful name for you. And we'll go into that directory. Now you can see there's two files in here. You have a run command and a config command. The run command is if you're going to run this interactively, we're only going to be dealing with the config command, which will set this up and run this as a service as a service. So go over and start up a windows command prompt and run it as an admin. And then let's move over to that directory. So we just want to CD over. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to run this command right from this prompt so that we can answer it and see any feedback that we get back in case it shuts down. And we just want to move this over a little bit. Okay, so the command we want to run is just config. We're going to run that command file there. And the first thing it's going to ask us is, let's see, okay, first it's going to do that. Now it's going to ask us for the server URL. Now the server URL is what is your DevOps um, organizational account root URL? So when I say that, I mean like if you're going to your DevOps account, it's going to be HTTPS colon like ours is master visual studio dot visual studio uh, dot com. Yours is obviously going to be different. So whatever yours is, put that there. And let me just jump over and show you what that would look like. You can see that there in the URL bar. And that was kind of quick. Let me just bring that back over and explain exactly what you want to take out of that. So that top part of the URL, everything before that project name. So it's HTTPS master visual studio dot visual studio dot com. Whatever yours is, enter that there. And I forgot the HTTPS at the beginning. So I'm going to go put that in and then hit enter. And then the next prompt it's going to give you is what type of authentication do you want to use? We're moving forward with uh, a PAT or uh, personal access token. So we just hit enter. And then if you try to paste it, you'll see you just get a star. But if you right click and say paste, it will paste your personal access token using that approach, which is much easier than trying to type it in. So once you do that, hit enter, it'll connect out to the server, ask you to build the agent pool that you want to put this new agent into. Well, if we go back over to Azure and look at our settings and the agent pools, you can see we created that new agent pool called MVS local pool. So we're going to want to type in that name back over at the command prompt. You just bring that up. And then it's going to ask us, what do we want to actually call this agent? Now it's going to default to the name of the server, but in reality, you could end up with multiple build agents on this server. So give it a name that is unique to what you're using this agent for. And I'm using it for this organization. I'm just going to call it agent 01. But in your case, give it a meaningful name. It'll then scan for capabilities, which is what does this server have on it, such as Visual Studio, NPM, because when you're doing a build later, it's beyond the scope of this, but you can put constraints on when Azure can use your different build agents. It'll also go ask, where do you want to put your work files? You can see we went with the default and just hit enter and then said run as a service. So once it does that, um, and it's going to ask you if you want to uh, use the network service for the user. We'll do that. You can configure a custom user account if you want to. Um, but at that point, we've finished installing this build agent on our server. And if we open up Server Manager, go over to Tools and Services, you'll be able to see that it is on the server on the services panel right there, and that it is running. Now, one thing I'd note is if you look at the startup type, it defaults to automatic delayed start. And I have seen an issue there where it would not actually end up being started after a reboot. So what I've done is typically switched over, switch that to automatic, and then just click apply and OK. And we haven't run into any issues with that. It seems like that has solved that problem. So if we close that down, at this point, we've got our service up and running. And the next question is, let's go ahead and see if Azure can connect to it over HTTPS. So now we're back over at the DevOps portal, looking at our agent pools again. And you'll see there is our MVS local pool. If we click on that, we can go in and 
lo and behold, there's our MVS Agent 01. It is online and ready to go. Now, if you're not seeing that, one thing to check is that your port H, uh, 443 for uh, HTTPS is open and that your, being, your, your web addresses, your web requests are being forwarded to that port on that server. Uh, as long as that's the case, you should be able to see your agent in here up and running and we're ready to move on to the next step and try to use this in a build process. All right, so now we're over in a new project that I have. It's a very basic project, basically an Angular repo with just a new app generated in it, uh, not even customized, just created it, checked it in, so we'll have something to build. And if we go over to our build, I have created a build pipeline that I did an initial build with uh, through a agent on a hosted agent on the Microsoft DevOps platform. So now what I want to do is switch that over to use our new agent. So if we go to the build and click on edit, and then we'll go to the, you can see here, it's just, it's going to run through some NPM installs for Angular and the CLI. So if we go over to the pool that we want to run it on and we just drop down that, we don't see our pool there. And so what's going on? We just added that. We knew it was there a minute ago and I'll refresh and it's not showing up. Well, what's going on is we're now in a different project. When we added that, we were within the scope of a project So now we're going to go over to the agent pools under this project and you can see it does not show up there. But if we go over to here and look at the existing pools, we do have a pool in this organization called MVS local pool. Let's add that agent to this project. Now click create. It'll show up in the list. And that's great. Now, once we have that in there, when we jump back over to our project, so if we actually let's go take a look real quick, there's the agent, it's online. All right, so that's all good. If we go back to the build agent, now we should be able to select that. We'll go to build, edit our build, and drop it down, and there it is. So great, now we can pick our local build agent pool. And notice we don't pick the agent, we just pick the pool. And then the pool will manage which agent it assigns it to. So let's go ahead and kick off our first build on our local agent. I'm going to just put in a quick comment here and kick that off. Now, I normally fast forward through all these builds. There's a couple of things I want to point out here, though, so I'm going to let this one run for just a minute. If you look, it does say our agent name is the one that we created on the machine. So in case you had multiple, you would know which one was running this build. You can also see the version of agent build that it's on, the machine. And the other thing to note is that as this is going to go off and build, uh, at one point here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to jump over to the build server where we installed the agent. And you can see now under that work folder that we designated as where this agent would do its work, all these folders are now getting created for it to run the build. It's going to have a, the tool, the temp, the source, the source code is going to be brought down to that folder. So all that is happening now in this agent under that work folder that we created. And so now we can see the rest of this build going through. And this should wrap up in just a minute. Now, note this is the first time running this build on this server, so it's going to take a little bit longer. And okay, so that finished up. That was successful. So we've got our first local build uh, done pretty easily here using DevOps, just pointing to our, our own server. Now, the other thing to notice, if we go back to that build that we just uh, swapped over our agent pool, if we, there's an option here about how you want to run this every time, whether you want to clean out the sources and the what gets built, or you want to be able to have it just kind of sped up a little bit by not having to do full environment restores. So here, if we see where that says clean and there's the true or false, we have it set to false, which means if it's already got most of the sources or all that, it's not going to try to refresh those or clean out the output folder and all that, which allows us to save a little bit of time. So we're going to leave that at false. And then I just want to queue this build again so we can compare the difference between the first time it ran and the second in the amount of time that it took. Now, in a lot of scenarios, you're going to say, hey, I want to have a clean build every time just to make sure nothing in the existing environment corrupted it. Absolutely 100% valid. In this case, I'm just doing this just to show what the difference might be if you left part of it for uh, a quick build that you need to just run on your servers, not obviously something that's going to be a final production build. So here you can see we've got the two builds that we just ran, numbers 8 and 9. If we go into 8, that first one that we did, First time on that server took about seven and a half minutes. And then if we go back and look at the logs for that last build, 
the second one we ran just under three minutes so more than cut in half something to think about as an option as you go forward about whether or not you need to have that environment get cleaned every time or whether or not it's a little more crucial to you to get that results back faster from the build all right so that wraps up us creating a local build agent on Azure DevOps. I hope you all found that useful. Uh, we were able to get a build up running pretty quickly. And hopefully, if you have any questions, you can just reach out, let me know. You can find me here at LinkedIn, Jeff Daniels. Uh, also, feel free to hit me up over at my uh, company, templelogic.com, or just leave comments below if you have any thoughts, questions, or requests for new material. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you in the next video.